amazed at how much I'm liking this coronavirus quarantine. I mean, there's a real uh, stillness to the city. The air is really, really clean. And, uh, you know, you go out and, and there's no rushing about and you can stay six feet away from people if you do take a walk, which of course we don't recommend. But uh, it's really just a, a, a lovely, lovely, lovely city where you realize the human presence and the colors of the light and the air are what make it special and nothing more. And so I, I almost sometimes want to, you know, applaud the coronavirus for doing what, you know, so many different revolutions and systems couldn't, which is just shut the machine down, put it on tilt for even just five minutes. It's a beautiful achievement. And I feel like in some ways this horrible little pandemic deserves a, a, a wee backdoor pat as it gets scolded by the entire history of the world. Anyways, um, so one of the things I like about it is that I'm having a lot of time to get my ironing done and it's kind of good. It, it piled up over the, over the months and uh, it's been a long time since I've ironed at home. That's always a treat for me. And so I can't really say so far that this experience has been all bad. In fact, I think it's been quite nice in many, many, many ways. Um, although I did see something today that felt a little bit tragic. I saw as I was leaving my house to go on my daily walk, um, I am in front of a Rite Aid that's transitioning into a Walgreens and, a, and, all the, and they're, they're remodeling it. Although why, since it's just a different drugstore, I don't know. Um, and, and there was a huge dumpster in the front and this woman was throwing away all kinds of medical supplies, including, I looked, a bunch of cotton balls, a bunch of witch hazel, you know, things that you might imagine would be useful during a pandemic. Um, and a man came walking up the street as she was doing this and he, uh, he said, Hey, what, like, what's in those boxes? And she answered, Oh, it's, it's trash. And I understood it as, you know, it's a commodity that's called trash that you can purchase and then you throw in a dumpster and sort of this you know, beautiful, horrific, you know, capitalist, you know, uh, uh, punchline. And uh, it was actually just really sad. So anyways, that was one thing I observed that seemed unusual. Any, I thought we could call a friend of mine. I have a friend in Denmark who is going through the same thing we're going through, right in the heart of Copenhagen. And I thought we could go into her room and her house and see how she is dealing with this strange epidemic. So if you'll bear with me, um, let me just try really quickly to give her a ring. Now she may be sleeping because it is in fact uh, much, much, much earlier there in Amsterdam, but uh, she may be awake. So let's give it a try. And I'm really intrigued as to how we're all so instantly enamored of and, and able to enjoy these methods of contact. Oh, yay, I think we're in luck. I'm gonna put you right here, Anna. I'm gonna put this down here. Can you see me? Oh, wait, perhaps she's... There she is. Ah, so, how are you doing? I'm not sure I can hear you. Will you talk? I said I'm sleeping. Ah, if I talk like this, can you hear me? Um, yeah. So, how is your... How was your coronavirus day? Um, it was um, fine. I went for a walk with somebody from the apartment. How does your apartment You've got a sleepy brain. I hate to ask you a logic question, but how does your apartment deal with quarantine issues? Um, well, one of us 
this is our visit. She's studying and working. And she has to do like all of her work at home. So it's kind of extra work. And um, I think that um, like then there's the rest of us who know. some of us are just trying to be more creative. Yeah. I'm giving I'm giving myself special like tasks. Yeah. A day. How's your anxiety level? Um, By the way, I should make it clear to people that you're just sleepy because you woke up. Anne's not sick at all. You're not sick at all, right? You're just tired because it's like three in the morning there. Yeah. It seems it wise to point that out. Um, um, so what did you do? What did you say? Sorry, I was just saying, if you didn't, for anybody who didn't know you, to look at you right now. Oh, about anxiety. I said, how's your anxiety level? Well, mm -hmm. it is becoming scary. Yeah? Like today I heard um, a press conference uh, where they told us that they are going to show the rules and the law about committing crimes during this crisis. Or this virus. What will they do with that law? They will make it. What? How will they sharpen it? Because um, a lot of, well, not a lot, but they've seen cases now where people are stealing hand sanitizers from the hospitals and people going into other people's homes. Their stuff. And if you do that during a pandemic, um, then this time during the pandemic, the, the, how do you say, if you're committing a crime, then the punishment will be, um, they're gonna, how do you say, um, Punish you, fine you, charge you money. Double. No, they're gonna double the time. Oh my god! So it's like it's like being near a school or near a church. You know, like often if they you, would? a lot of times if you commit a robbery from a store that's near a school or a church, it's it's twice as bad as if you just commit a robbery. You know, in the next to a Walmart, I guess. Anyways, wow. Yeah. So, and what would you say? Like, are you, are you scared of your own health or are you just scared of what will happen in the world? Um, well, I don't, maybe both because, I don't know, I think I will be fine, but you also, like, people are talking about these cases where where it's not only young people, uh, sorry, old people that get really ill and die from it, but I still think that it, that we as young people have a big responsibility to not, to try and not get the virus so that we can give it to people that are more weak than us. Mm -hmm. And I guess that I'm just scared about my moves. I'm I love, like it's scary to think about how the world will look like. When yeah. This is over. And it's scary to think about where this will end because it just seems like the numbers are increasing. And you don't I cannot really imagine I don't have the imagination to see where it ends, and that's kind of scary. Yeah. Are you more scared than the people in your like, in your apartment? 
What? Are you more scared than the people in, that you live with? Are you one of the people who's more scared, would you say, or less scared? I, I think that it comes in waves with us. Oh, that's so dramatic. Did you hear that? Say something again and I'll give it a really dramatic steam boost, okay? What can you say very dramatic about the coronavirus? <laughs> that's the, I just wanted to be able to do that. All right, I'm sorry. I, I, I interrupted your Maybe train of thought. Maybe my look was the most scary one. Your what? Maybe my look you, is you, the most scary one. You look? You ask me that question. <laughs> it comes in waves. Yeah. I think some some of us have days where it's more scary than for others. So we're just shifting. Has it revealed anything in the people that you know that has surprised you? Where you're like, oh, you know how they say you only really understand human nature when you're, you know, stuck in a foxhole with somebody, when you're contemplating mortality at close quarters? Has anybody surprised you with how they've their their person or their behavior or their moral code has changed? We're more chill than others. Mm -hmm. And then that was maybe like just dealing with it differently was a surprise because you just think that everybody will do the same. But, but now it's been in the in like the pandemic period for like over the three three weeks, right. all of us seem to know that it's pretty serious. Do you want to hear it, Joe? Still, there's others that are more chill, but like, yeah, it, there's still a difference. Do you want to hear a, a joke that's appropriate to a pandemic? Mm -hmm. So this man is having breakfast with his wife and they're worried about the coronavirus. And she says, my God, you know, I, one of us could die. And he says, yeah, I suppose that's true. And she says, well, if I, if I died, you know, would you, would you, would you, would you remarry? And the man says, well, yeah, I'd, I'd probably remarry. I mean, I wouldn't, you know, like I, I, I'm fairly young and I might remarry. Yes. And she said, oh, would you, would you sell the apartment? And he said, no, this apartment is, I mean, no, I'd, I'd be very sorry you're dead, but I wouldn't sell the apartment. And he said, uh, would, you sell, would, would you sell the bed? He said, no, I don't see a reason to sell the bed. I mean, it's not, you know, there's nothing wrong with the bed just because you died. And then the woman says, well, you wouldn't, you wouldn't let her use my golf clubs, would you? And he said, no, she's left-handed. You don't get it. What? So... He already knows. Exactly. In the, I guess it's however you want to interpret it. In the time it takes her to pose a hypothetical question, he's already managed to cheat and have an affair in his mind. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> that's, I guess, the point. Anyways. Wow. Well, that was special marriage. What are you going to do tomorrow? Well, I don't know, but I can tell you what I did this evening. What did you do this evening? So, it's like what it does for, I don't know how to explain, but what we just did this evening in the apartment, I live with five others, and this is kind of what it does to you being isolated for so many days. We live like three boys and three girls, and we all um painted each other's toenails today <laughs> and um and then uh, like then me and jack we painted dots on our fingers on our fingernails and our hands 
Oh, that's beautiful. Wow. Well, listen, I'm going to go, okay? And I'm going to let you go to sleep now. I'm going to let you go to sleep now. But I want to say I hope you stay well. And thank you for letting me interrupt your sleep. I want like what? To, I said thank you for letting me interrupt your sleep. Right? You're welcome. And I hope you stay very, very well. And I'm glad you're all yeah. I'm glad none of you are sick. And we wish the Danish people all the best. Because they produce yeah. Victor Borga, if nothing else. So <laughs> all right. Good night, my dear. Good night. Sleep tight. I please. will. By the way, this was a dress Trying rehearsal. This was a dress rehearsal, and you did amazing. I'm serious. This was. Oh my God, that was very fun. Okay, um, I'm sorry. She was very sleepy, but I thought it was lovely to listen to what she had to say. I hope you agree. Um, so I did promise some tips, and uh, I have a very simple tip um, to get a razor sharp uh, 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 pleat. You know, a razor sharp seam. You use a wooden block now. I don't think I've ever had much of a cause to use this kind of a wooden block, but you know, say you want to get a super, 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 super sharp line. I'm just using a brick. In fact, let me light this up. I'm just using a simple uh, handkerchief here, but say you wanted to get a super sharp line in this handkerchief, right? Like so sharp that if you were having a picnic and you forgot to bring a knife to cut the cheese, you could just take the handkerchief and just run it down the edge of the cheese and the cheese would part like the Red Sea. Um, so the way to do that, is you simply use this and you iron it. And then it's almost like, you know, when people wax uh, their bikini lines and the minute they, the, they pull the wax out, the, 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 the wax, waxista, the uh, waxador, the, the wax woman, um, immediately puts her hand there to, to staunch the pain. So in a similar way, you give yourself a nice firm pleat, right? Just like that. And then right after it, Crush it with this simple wooden block. And that should uh, take care of making a very sharp pleat indeed. Now, oh dear, well, here we go. You can see, I don't know if you can see that. <laughs> Could cut your head off. Anyways, um, well, listen, that's what I have to do tonight for my ironing. I hope I have more ironing to do with people tomorrow. I have many days to do my ironing and I hope I don't run out anytime soon. Uh, and if you liked what you just saw, go ahead and reply in the comments below. And if anybody wants to send me an item to be ironed with questions or, a, you know, desire to talk, my board is your board, as they say. All right. The vector is ironing. Peace be with you. Everybody stay safe and healthy.